So how did you ever take the floor in the NBA Finals against the Lakers and you look down there and it's Magic and Kareem and, and their group and you've got your group and you're in it. You're part of this thing. Yeah. I mean, it was fun. It was, it was very special. I mean, those teams were stacked, both the Lakers and the Celtics in that, in that early to mid-'80s. Um, you know, Kareem, uh, you know, arguably one of the greatest players that's ever lived, and you got Bird and Magic who, you know, chain, transformed the entire league. And then you got players like Worthy and Byron Scott and Bob McAdoo and McHale and Maxwell. And I mean, we got a guy Scott. Rambus we, was we in got, there at some got, point. Yeah, but I didn't mention him on purpose. But <laughs> we have we have a guy like Scott Wedman, who was the highest paid player during this era at one point, and was an NBA All Star the year before we got him, and he couldn't even get on the court. I mean, he was like a ten minute a game player and was a fantastic player, but big three point shooter, right? Playing, yeah. yeah, playing behind Bird and and Mikhail, but most people don't even know like he was an All Star. It's, it's, it's interesting. We, we were talking about this with BYU in the Gonzaga game the other day. Um, there's guys making shots all game long, and then the game's on the line, and it's coming down the stretch. And there were times we looked out of the floor and we're going, no, nobody even wants it right now. Like, nobody even wants the ball. And you, you were a guy that wanted the ball. And, and when you got with the Celtics and you were surrounded by a bunch of other guys that, that wanted the ball, um, you had to play a role. Uh, but it didn't mean that if, if they drew something up for you, you weren't like, yeah, give me the ball. I'll knock down that shot. What's the difference between a player that wants the ball in the third quarter um, and wants to make shots but, but doesn't necessarily want it in the last six seconds of the ball game when the game's on the line? Yeah, I, you know, I think, that, I think that as I look at those Celtics and Lakers teams, I think, you know, when you have a Byron Scott and a James Worthy and Dennis Johnson and Cedric Max, like those guys were all capable. They had been go-to guys throughout their high school, throughout their college careers, and none of them were afraid in the NBA because they had moments already. They had moments where, I mean, even though they're not going to run a play for me with Bird or McHale out on the court, like if they're going to double my guy or like we have, I have to be prepared to take that shot. Right. And you, you're not afraid just because you've lived it and you've had that success, and I think you have that confidence and belief in yourself and – and I think that, like, with BYU's team, they don't really have a guy that has been that person ever in their life, maybe not even in high school, but probably, yeah. but um, for sure not in, in college level yet. So I don't think they're afraid of it. I think that what happens is um, you gain confidence as your career goes along, and I think also there's, a, there's a, such a tendency for people to play not to lose and just to take their foot off the gas and they're thinking like you know we got to hang on to this game it's, you know we got a 10 point lead and the game slows down and so I don't think it's afraid to shoot um, I think it's just sometimes not knowing how aggressive to be and how confident to play and how much swagger to have and uh, you know the, the constant movement you're trying to run the clock or do you you know you can you run the clock and still try to get the best shot at the same time. And the good teams can do that.